Hi guys and welcome to Nick's Home Renovation. In this video I will take you on a tour of the three bathrooms I installed at my 1936 bungalow and I'll be showing you what I've bought, how much I've bought everything for, where you can buy it and I'll also talk through the tradesmen involved in these projects in the bathrooms and how much they cost. I'll take you now on a tour of all three bathrooms and we'll talk one at a time about each one. So, for those of you that have followed the series throughout, this used to be 50% bathroom here and a separate toilet in that room. So there was no toilet in this room and we knocked down the wall in between and installed this. I'll show you some of the fittings first and then we'll discuss everything in a bit more detail. So it's only a small main bathroom, around three meters by two meters, but as it's a bungalow, we have quite a nice height, which is always feels nice. I'll start with this freestanding bath. So it's one of my favorite parts of the, of the bathroom, but unfortunately it is the most expensive part of the bathroom at 486 pounds from Victoria Plumbing. And it's an Earl Grey double-ended bath and it was 486 pounds and it measures 1750, which fitted perfectly into this 1800 gap I have here. It's freestanding, which I much prefer. And I think it goes really well with these lovely tiles which are Laura Ashley, Mr. Jones tiles. You've probably seen them many times on Instagram and other places as they're kind of everywhere because they're so nice. Um, and actually, I know it's a small floor area, but 86 pounds these tiles were, um, which I think is pretty good to cover all the flooring here. And then while we're on the subject of tiles, just a simple white Metro tile runs halfway round the whole bathroom, except for obviously the shower zone where we ran it the whole way up to the ceiling, but finished off this niche with Mr. Jones tiles in there, which I think is a really nice feature. While we're in this room, I'll show you the shower fittings. So this is called the Trafalgar Shower Package from Victoria Plumbing. So the hose, the dials, and the shower head were 198 pounds from Victoria Plumbing. I went for the chrome look everywhere in here and I really like how they turned out. I think this bathroom is sort of more of a traditional bathroom throughout. I think it really works well in a 30 property. This lovely radiator is from a company called Better Bathrooms and it is a also a towel rail, as you can see and it's called the Regent Towel Rail from Better Bathrooms and it's £162. This vanity unit is the Avery, Avery, sorry, Avery Gray vanity unit, and it's 270 pounds. And that comes with the sink as well. The only negative I think is it only came with one hole, whereas I prefer the two hole taps. But I still really like the look, and I really like how it all just blends in with the gray of the floor tiles and the gray of the bath. I think the whole thing just works really well. The shower screen, you're, you'll be surprised how much shower screens can cost. So this was £301 from Victoria Plumbing. A bit more expensive than your common one because it's frameless, so there's very little here and here to make it almost seem frameless. And I think it's worth it, especially in a small bathroom like this to make it all seem as open as possible and not box everything in. The WC and seat is from Victoria Plumbing. 
and it's a Burlington, which I'm sure you've heard of as being one of the more traditional WCs. And they've got quite a good name. I just like the small details, like on the tank at the back, just topping everything off nicely. And then one of my favorite things about this bathroom is this tap and mixer, which is again for Victoria Plumbing and is called the Lancaster Traditional Freestanding Bath Shower Mixer. So that go, those pipes go all the way down to the floor here. And it just works really well, I think, with the shape of this bath being high, higher at the ends and sloping down into the middle. Lastly, just this mirror and two lights. The mirror was from Better Bathrooms, I believe. Yep, yeah, oh, yeah, so Better Bathrooms, um, that was 60 pounds, and that's just the chrome, under the chrome mirror. I liked, again, that it had the traditional feel with the chrome edges here. And then these wall lights are by John Lewis and they are just called Astro Anton wall lights and they're 110 pounds each. And I think they work well as well, following the chrome effect. I'll go through the cost of all the labor once I've gone through the tours of the three bathrooms. Next we'll go to the ensuite and I'll talk you through everything in there. So this is the ensuite, part of the extension that used to be the old garage and turned into a large master bedroom with ensuite. We'll start on the left here with this vanity unit. So the vanity unit is a green vanity from Ikea and they're gonna mess with my speech here because it's called God Morgan slash Tolkien, um, which I'm sure is pronounced incorrectly. I really like the color and always wanted to do this green paint from Lick on the wall as well. So I feel like it works really well because I didn't want it exactly the same color. I wanted it slightly different and I really wanted a green vanity unit and I really think that works well as just a little feature wall just to make this room pop because I think if it was all white it would be a bit dull but it's such a small space. The brushed gold mirror is from Better Bathrooms or Appliances Direct as they're also known. That was £54 and the wall lights are from John Lewis and they're called Antique Brass Wall Lights and they were £80 each. Coming into the shower zone, we have, we don't have a hose in here, we just have the shower head and the mixer. And they were, this is called the Trafalgar Concealed Shower Valve with shower head, and that was £171 for both. Again, I really like the detail around the edge of how that looks. As you can see, I went for the metro tile everywhere in here again, because it's just a small room, it's about 1.8 meters by 1.8 meters. I don't think I could have done anything too wild. So we just half tiled it everywhere around here and fully tiled in the shower and then left the, the rest plain. I think it just would have thrown off the toilet and everything else if I went too heavy on the tiles. So those metro tiles were only a hundred pounds and on the floor we went for urban grey matte from Tile Mountain on the floor. Those metro tiles are also from Tile Mountain as are the Laura Ashley ones that I showed you in the main bathroom. The shower screen is from Victoria Plumbing, exactly the same design as in the main bathroom so it's the Apollo by Victoria Plumbing again. This one's 333 pounds. As I said, the shower screens are phenomenally expensive, so prepare yourself for that. But this one was more expensive again as I went for the frameless, just to make the room seem as big as possible. And I really like how it looks on the door openings, whereas usually you'd have a big frame there, which could ruin it. And then lastly, the towel rail. 
which is called the Gobi Tower Out from Better Bathrooms. And for those interested in all these doors, they're from Howden's. These are around £75 each. And I will look for the name now. They were called Holden B Doors, Oak Doors. And I think they work really well. And I'll just see if I can find the handles now. And the handles were from Wix and they're just called Designer Levers Marvel Range. And I like them because they had this sort of funky curve on them. And they went really well with this main door from Howden's. That's bathroom number two. Lastly, I'll take you upstairs to the loft conversion. The third and final bathroom is a part of my loft conversion and had to fit into this very unusual space at the end where we've got this reduced height. So we went for a freestanding bath only. The freestanding bath was £492 from Better Bathrooms. It's a really nice, big, deep one, and it works really well in this space. As downstairs, we have the traditional bathroom and an ensuite. I wanted to do something a bit different up here and make it a bit more modern. That's why we went for white everywhere with black fittings, marble effect tiles, and then I really like the details around the niches and all these black fittings. So the baths from Best Bathrooms, 492 pounds. The tap you can see in here is called Arisa from Better Bathrooms, A-R-I-S-S-A. -S -S and that's a floor standing tap with hose, which looks really nice. And there, and a bit of a statement piece, I think. Um, the vanity unit behind me is from Mountain Warehouse. It's just a plain white two drawer vanity unit. That is 280 pounds. And this towel rail over here is called Soloran Tower Rail from Better Bathrooms as well. As you can see, I've got most of my things from the same place, either Victorian plumbing or Better Bathrooms, as it's way simpler for deliveries. If we talk about our tiles, but these are from Tile Mountain, where the other tiles from downstairs were, and they're called the Carrera White Gloss Marble Effect. So Carrera is C-A-R-R-A-R-A, -R -R -A, and the floor tiles are around £141, and the wall tiles are around £71, because we just did this one wall behind the bath in the splash zone. I really like how they look. We use the big 60 by 60 ones on the floor, and I really like how they tie in perfectly with the 60 by 30 ones on the wall. And even just the detail in the niche and the tile did a really good job keeping those lines going straight up all the way from the floor to the top. Other than that, it's just a small few small purchases, just like little things that I thought were important, like getting the slotted base Slotted waste in black, that's also a Risa, £25, but I think actually it's important if you're going to do things to do it properly. And I did the same just with a toilet roll holder as well, keeping everything black where possible. The toilet itself is the same as downstairs in the ensuite. And that is called the Newport Toilet from Better Bathrooms, that's £155 each, which I must have forgotten downstairs. So, tradesman costs. So my tiler for three bathrooms charged me, and all of my prices are including VAT as well, my tiling was £2,265. So that includes floor and wall tiles, all the niches in the main bathroom, the ensuite, and upstairs in the loft. So £2,265, or if you want to do it, break it down, you'd probably say, due to the size of it, this one would, this one and upstairs would probably cost more than the ensuite. Um, this one certainly has the most tiles, so this would be the bulk of it in this main bathroom. 
maybe a thousand pounds, and then the other two, the 1200 split between the other two, so 600 each. Um, plastering costs, so the whole bungalow, which is around 1700 square foot, cost me around 7,000 pounds to be plastered, including VAT. Um, this doesn't include insulating and plasterboard, this is just purely the plasterers um, with their costs. So £6,000 plus VAT for the whole bungalow. So to break that down into rooms would be really tricky, as that's not really, I'm used to doing bigger projects. But if I were to guess, I'd say a room of this size should probably be anywhere between 300 and 500 depending on where you live. Um, as it's only a small room, 3 by 2 but all the walls were in really bad condition. So 300 to 500 pound per bathroom in this bungalow, I think is about right. But that doesn't include any other costs. And again, it's difficult with my plumbing costs, but you probably want to assign a bit more per bathroom for a plumber. I'd say anywhere between 1,000 and 2,000 pounds, because as you can imagine, plumbing is where all the money goes in the bathroom, as you've got in here particularly, you've got towel rail, showers, separate bar, sink, you might have underfloor heating, you might have all sorts of different variants. Um, so plumbing is always gonna be the major cost um, here, but I'd, I'd put it anywhere between 1,000 and 2,000 pounds, depending on what you're doing. But I think you'd do well to get a plumber for 1,000 pounds for a bathroom. I think it'd be nearer two, if I'm honest. Um, electrical cost, again, fairly tricky, as I rewired this whole bungalow myself. Um, so I don't have a cost per room. But electrics for bathrooms aren't that difficult, to be honest. You've, all, you've only got lighting, the bathroom fan, and then if anyone wants shaver sockets or dual fuel towel rails, there are options, optional extras as well. Um, you can do it per fitting sometimes, so some tradesmen might say, oh, I'll charge you 80 to 100 pounds per fitting. So in this room, we have four lights on the ceiling, one light in the niche, the fan, and they also include switches in that. So we've got a light switch for the main lights, a light switch uh, for that and an ice set. So you, that, you're looking at 900 pounds to a thousand pounds, not even including these two wall lights here as well. So again, I think you do well to find an electrician under about 1500 pounds to, to rewire a bathroom for you as well. So they're the main costs. Obviously there are always, it's, it's impossible to say specific costs per room because um, we had carpentry they needed doing in here, fitting doors, fitting architraves around the doors. This property is sort of 90 years old, so a lot of the walls were really out and they had to do a lot of work, especially around these architraves, making them look as good as they do. But that would be my rough guess. So all three of these bathrooms were under £10,000, which I think is fantastic, but at the same time, I'm doing this as a larger project and I did the electrics for cost price because I did it all myself and I've been working with my guys for sort of 10 plus years so I do get favourable rates because we work together so often um, but just to keep that in mind and hopefully some of these costs were helpful um, if anyone wants to email me any questions um, I'll do my best to answer you as well as I can good luck with any project you're taking on goodbye <laughs>